Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Winnipeg Centre. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I rise today to speak about Bill C-35, the Canada Early Learning and Child Care. Let me take this opportunity, first of all, to thank all the advocates, experts, parents, child care providers, workers, unions and others who took the time to make presentations or write submissions to the committee. Your passion for the knowledge about quality, affordable, accessible child care shone through and it helped us make the bill better. There are too many people and organizations to name, but I am so grateful for your advocacy and guidance. I am proud that we have emerged from the committee process with an improved piece of legislation. As a result of amendments put forward by the NDP, the bill includes stronger reporting requirements for greater accountability and transparency, more inclusive language that reflects the needs of children with disabilities and those from official language minority communities, recognitions that the conditions of work affect the conditions of care an amendment to uphold the right of Indigenous peoples to free, prior and informed consent on matters pertaining to their children. This acknowledgement is historic and is the first time since the passage of Bill C-15 that it is enshrined in federal legislation. This bill builds on other important provisions included in the original bill, including an explicit prioritization of non-profit and public child care for federal funding, something the NDP fought for and won. Witness after witness made it clear. The research overwhelmingly agrees that non-profit and public child care delivers, delivers are the best, uh, delivers the best outcomes, the highest quality of child care for children. And I hope after Bill C-35 becomes law, we no longer see federal money being used to expand for-profit child care in Canada. As we saw several months ago in Alberta, the federal government announcing its support for 22,500 new for-profit spaces. Public money should be used to expand public and non-profit child care. Public monies need to be invested in public institutions. It is better for workers and it's better for children. The NDP supports this bill and I urge my colleagues from all parties to pass it unanimously to show our commitment to support children, families, workers and child care providers. This is an important step towards building a permanent national system of $10 a day child care. I want to focus my remarks today on the theme that emerged time and time again in committee. We have a child care workforce crisis in this country. Child care workers receive wages that are not livable and benefits that are not adequate. They often endure difficult working conditions and unless we address these issues, we are putting the success of a national child care system at risk. Who are these workers? Well, Speaker, more than 98% of them are women. One third are immigrants or non permanent residents, and they are more likely than workers in all other occupations to be racialized. They perform some of the most critical work in our society, providing education during the years most crucial to a child's development, and yet they are treated as disposable. The wage floor for an early childhood educator, for example, in Ontario, is just $19 an hour. $19 an hour for providing essential work. Do you know what the average rent for a one-bedroom apartment in Toronto is? $2,500 a month. This is outrageous. We are asking people to take on work of looking after and educating our kids and then we're not paying them enough to provide for their own kids? It is no wonder that people who are trained as early childhood educators are leaving the profession to take better paying jobs in other fields. Or that many people are discouraged from entering the profession in the first place. More than any other factor, this is why we have a shortage of childcare spaces across the country. I know that the fee reductions were, uh, we've been seeing as a result of the bilateral agreements with the provinces are having a huge and positive impact for thousands of families. 
I want to acknowledge that. I want to acknowledge that it is making their lives more affordable. But far too many others are stuck on wait lists and can't afford the benefits of more affordable childcare. We can build all the new spaces we want, but that means little unless well-trained, well-paid workers are put in place and staffed to staff these new centres. I've often heard the situation in the childcare sector described as a worker shortage. But let's be clear, this is in fact not a worker shortage. It's a wage shortage, it's a respect shortage, it's a dignity shortage. And this shortage of dignity and respect is contributing to the shortage of affordable spaces. Last week, the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives released a report showing that almost half of younger children, which means those not yet attending kindergarten, live in, quote, childcare deserts, where there are more than three children for every licensed childcare space. In Saskatchewan, the number is 92 per cent, and in my own province of Manitoba, it's 76 per cent. One of the key recommendations the report offers to address this is by guaranteeing decent wages and benefits for child care workers. We need immediate federal investments to, to provinces and territories to improve their child care staff wage grids. We also need this government to put in place a workforce strategy that ensures livable wages, better benefits, retirement security, adequate working conditions, education, and training opportunities. I want to address this argument. I often hear from my colleagues that this is a provincial jurisdiction. But we are building a national child care system. And without federal leadership to address this workforce crisis and improve pay benefits and working conditions, this system will not be sustainable. It's not just workers who suffer from poor compensation. Their working conditions are kids' learning conditions, and it, directly, it is directly tied to the quality of care. The federal government can and must use its spending powers to raise the bar for workers. And, Speaker, the Liberals know that they can do this. In fact, in 2021, uh, during the 2021 election, they promised a wage floor of $25 an hour for personal um, support workers an area that is also within provincial jurisdiction. So why can't they make the same province of livable wages for childcare staff who perform different but equally essential roles in society? We don't have to choose between a $10 a day childcare and raising wages for childcare workers. We can and must have both if we are going to have a successful national child care strategy and in order to ensure that kids get the best quality of care that we are recruiting, in fact, Madam Speaker, and retaining the workers, we need to create more spaces so that parents can have access to affordable child care in communities where they live. I don't want this generation of early childhood educators and the future generations to have to make the same choice that I made, leaving the profession that I love because I wanted to pay my bills. I want to live in a country where the work of early childhood educators is valued just as highly as the work of doctors, lawyers, engineers, and all other professions. The government cannot wash its hands of this responsibility. It has a leadership role to play in ensuring that every child care worker in Canada is treated with respect and dignity. So I ask today, Madam Speaker, for all of us in this bill or, or in this House, let's pass this bill and let's ensure that the people who are at the heart of this national child care system we are trying to build, without whose labor there wouldn't be any system at all are no longer an afterthought. Thank you, Madam Speaker.